Well, let's continue with a reaction. I'm joined by UK correspondent Julia Chapman in London. Uh, Julia, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, this deal, of course, is still in its proposal stages, but our Minister of Tourism is very firm in her beliefs that it should be scrapped totally, saying that it's invalid and unlawful. Um, Tottenham Hotspur, they've been tight-lipped during this whole process. What can you tell us? Have you maybe heard from them, their side of the story? Tottenham Hotspur has uh, repeatedly throughout this process that has been ongoing for the last couple of months refused to make any comment whatsoever. It has not commented on uh, the speculation of the deal in the early stages and it hasn't commented on any of the drama that has unfolded since then uh, as we learned that this, was, uh, de that this deal was on the table and then have followed the ins and outs of the political wrangling in South Africa as to whether or not it would go ahead. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur uh, in a statement today told us that it does not issue comments on commercial matters. And that is simply all we have heard and are likely to hear from them on this deal with SA Tourism. Now, do you think this might possibly jeopardize SA Tourism's relationship with other English Premier League clubs? It could certainly have that impact. Uh, what we have seen in recent weeks has been uh, a really painstaking uh, process uh, of trying to get to grips with what the deal actually looked like, what was being proposed, and what it would entail. Uh, those details have been drip-fed. There hasn't been a lot of clear and uh, confirmed information. And the way in which it has been handled, one minute looking like it was a, a finished deal, uh, sources had been telling ENCA that that uh, it was ready to go, that they were going to be launching it at one point a few weeks ago, only for that to be suddenly very much pulled uh, because of the political situation at home in South Africa. So there will certainly be questions raised with other potential uh, branding opportunities, be it other sporting clubs or other marketing areas that the uh, SA Tourism Board is looking at uh, putting funding behind. There will be questions asked as to whether this is a reliable partner, whether any deal is worth pursuing. Uh, certainly the optics have been troublesome in recent weeks and it will be uh, take some doing probably to get things back on track and ensure that this is a proposal worth investing in in the future with other partners. Mm, let's talk about that uh, briefly, the good and the bad when it comes to this deal. Many here in South Africa believe that, you know, yes, good exposure for the country, but is the return on investment really worth it? It is incredibly difficult to quantify, of course. You have to make, uh, put in money to make money, so you have to put up some upfront money to get South Africa's name out there and attract more tourism into the country, particularly after a rocky period with the pandemic. Uh, but undoubtedly, there are uh, delicate politics at play back at home in South Africa, and it is really difficult to know uh, how you can quantify putting that money in and what you will get back in tourism money. Now, what SA tourism has previously said is they've pointed to the Visit Rwanda deal that uh, they have with Arsenal. Uh, they claim that that has given an 8% boost to tourism in Rwanda directly as a result of that promotion on the shirt sleeves of Arsenal players. That's been going on since 2018. It is difficult to verify to what extent the boost in tourism is directly related to that campaign, but certainly it gives them a, a way of trying to quantify that amount. So it is really difficult and of course this was likely to be a much more expansive deal than the Visit Rwanda one that we saw with Arsenal. Uh, it was not just meant to be the shirt sleeves of players but also branding in stadiums and other areas, other forms of partnership where uh, South Africa's name was going to feature very heavily. So this could have been an even more expansive uh, advertising deal and one which may well have brought more South African, uh, more inbound uh, tourism to South Africa from not just uh, British members of the public public who are watching the Premier League, but also viewers around the world. It will be very difficult to measure that, but that was certainly the hope of SA Tourism. Mm, that's certainly the big debate, you know. Uh, would it have been, you know, worthwhile for South Africa to make that big investment? Um, but let's, you know, take a look at this. Spurs, you know, they're basically one of the richest, a super rich club um, and one of the richest in the English Premier League. But what we also know is that they recently completed Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, left the club with over 600 million pounds in debt. Surely they are, this might, you know, 
be a red flag saying that they want any deal whatsoever to get themselves out of this debt. Well, they certainly are uh, facing some financial difficulty, but this is a very big business and this is one of the biggest clubs in the Premier League. It has uh, one of the highest attendances uh, of its football matches here in the UK, often the most watched uh, football matches on television as well. So undoubtedly, there are a lot of sponsorship opportunities. They already have an existing deal with uh, a car uh, sales website that was uh, due to be replaced by SA Tourism, we understand, uh, but they will be looking for other sources of funding. Nevertheless, uh, because they have kept their powder pretty dry, they haven't really weighed into this. As I said, they simply haven't been commenting. Uh, they can still come to this with a pretty clean slate and a fresh start looking for new sponsorship opportunities, which they are still likely to find. Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, just giving us a brief update there on what the situation is in the UK um, around this whole um, South African tourism and Tottenham Hotspur deal. As we heard from Julia, Tottenham Hotspur is still very tight-lipped when it comes to this whole situation. And hopefully, maybe, we will hear something by next week, what they have to say about all of this. Of course, our Minister of Tourism, Patricia Dalal, saying that this deal should be scrapped totally.